connectors. You use them all the time for power, peripherals, data, the internet and more. Most devices have a range of ports, USB, AUX, HDMI and more. Unless you're an Apple fanboy, where they remove all the ports including the f***ing AUX cable. What's next? The power cable? They're used everywhere and for everything. Today we're going to cover the main ones used with computers, some old and some new. There are two main types of how data is actually transmitted. Parallel and serial. Now how do they work? Serial data transmission is a method of transferring data one bit at a time over a single communication channel. In this process the data is sent sequentially in a continuous stream. The bits are transmitted one after the other, typically using a single wire or pair of wires for transmission and reception. Serial transmission is often used for long distance communication and is known for its simplicity and cost effectiveness. During serial data transmission, the sender breaks the data into individual bits and sends them sequentially. Each bit is accompanied by timing information to ensure proper synchronisation between the sender and receiver. The receiver then reassembles the bits back into the original data. Since the data is transmitted sequentially, the overall transmission speed tends to be slower compared to parallel transmission. However, serial transmission requires fewer physical wires, making it more suitable for long distance communication or situations where wire count needs to be minimised. Parallel data transmission, as the name suggests, involves transmitting multiple bits simultaneously over multiple communication channels. In this method, each bit of data is sent over a separate wire or set of wires. Parallel transmission is commonly used in shorter distance communication and is known for higher transmission speed. In parallel transmission, the sender divides data into multiple chunks, with each chunk containing several bits. These chunks are then transmitted simultaneously over different wires or channels. At the receiver's end, the individual bits from each channel are combined to reconstruct the original data. Since multiple bits are transmitted simultaneously, parallel transmission often allows for higher data transfer rates compared to serial transmission. However, it requires a separate wire or channel for each bit, resulting in increased complexity and cost compared to serial. In summary, serial data transmission sends data one bit at a time over a single communication channel, while parallel data transmission sends multiple bits simultaneously over separate channels. Serial transmission is simpler, more cost effective and suitable for long distance communication compared to parallel. However, parallel transmission offers high speeds but requires more wires or channels, making it more suitable for shorter distances or situations that demand faster data transfer rates. The choice between serial and parallel transmission depends on factors such as distance, speed requirements, cost considerations and the specific application at hand. A serial connector, which looks like this VGA cable, is used for serial data transmission where data is sent one bit at a time over a single wire or pair of wires. One of the well-known connectors that uses serial is the RS232 connector, also known as DB9 or DB25. It has 9 or 25 pins and is commonly used for connecting devices such as modems, serial printers and older computer peripherals. A parallel connector is used for parallel data transmission, similar to this IDE cable, where multiple bits are sent simultaneously over separate wires or channels. The most recognised parallel connector is the Centronics connector, also known as parallel printer port. It was commonly used to connect printers to computers and had 30 six pins. USB connectors are widely used for connecting a variety of devices such as keyboards, mice, printers and external hard drives similar to this cable here. They provide a serial interface for more data transmission and power supply. USB connectors come in different shapes and sizes including USB-A, the traditional rectangular connector like the one I just threw over there, USB-B, a square shaped connector for devices such as printers, that probably stands for bullshit, USB-C is a small and reversible connector used in many modern devices. Ethernet connectors like this one are used for networking and internet connectivity. The most common Ethernet connector is the RJ45 connector like that one. This is similar in appearance to a telephone connector but it's larger. It's used to connect computers, routers, switches and other network devices together. HDMI connectors like this one are used for transmitting high definition video and audio signals between devices such as TV monitors, Blu-ray players and gaming consoles. HDMI connectors come in different sizes with the standard Type-A connector being the most common. 
There are two smaller types of HDMI connectors, mini and micro, that allow a high definition multimedia interface to be passed from a smaller device. Display port connectors, like this one, are widely used for connecting computer monitors or other display devices. They provide high quality audio and video transmission. Display port connectors have a distinctive rectangular edge with one corner angled. Thunderbolt connectors are used for high speed data transfer. Two different types, mini display port and USB-C. They're often found on Mac computers and provide a versatile interface connecting devices like external hard drives, external displays and external audio interfaces. VJ connectors like this one were commonly used for analog video signals before the advancement of digital displays. They have three rows of pins for a total of 15 on one connector and can often be found on older computers, projectors and monitors. So connectors can be useful but they can also be annoying when they go wrong. It would be a dream for tech enthusiasts like us to live in a world where one or two connectors can do everything and I think we're slowly moving towards that. It's a shame Apple still feels the need for this to be a USB-C connector. When realistically a USB-A connector could serve the same purpose and still have all of its other functions. Thanks for watching this video, if you enjoyed it feel free to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any future uploads and we'll see you next time.